Hi Gemini, this is your horoscope for November 2018. Thank you for joining me. Now, the first thing that I need to address is that Venus, the planet of love and beauty, that is in retrograde until the 16th of November. And then it goes direct. Venus is in your fifth house of romance and romantic relationships up until then. It's at 29 degrees in Libra. So if Venus weren't retrograde, this would be a fabulous time for you to make new romantic connections. But because Venus is in retrograde and it's in your fifth house of love, romance and connections, it's really likely that if you're a single Gemini that you will start a relationship during this period, the first 16 days of November, that's no good for you. You're likely to start a relationship with someone who promises everything and then delivers nothing. So be very careful on the dating front, it's not good. The first couple of days of November, the first, you're going to feel very, very communicative and very, uh, very driven to speak out and to be, to be an activist and to make sure that the injustice is not going to just go by unpassed, you say something about it. That then makes you retreat a little bit the next couple of days and your moon goes into Virgo and it stays in your fourth house until the 4th of November. So after the big public thing, you retreat a little bit and say, okay, I've done my bit now, I'm gonna shield myself and protect myself, which actually makes sense. You know, you, we have to, if you're up there, we have to come down. So there has to be a little bit of balance, which you do. Lots of self-care on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of November. That's very good for you. On the 4th of November as well, Mars, the male principle, that's at 23 degrees in your ninth house of broadening your horizons, uh, education, travel. And at 23 degrees in Aquarius, Mars says, I can achieve freedom by learning, teaching, being a humanitarian. And it squares Jupiter, which is at 29 degrees, so each house has 30 degrees. When something is at one degree or 29, it becomes heightened, it's even more critical. So you've got a very lucky Jupiter there in Scorpio, and it says, two and nine is 11, and it says, if you listen to your feelings, and if you identify what's wrong with people, intuitively then you can speak to them about it and heal them so this mars jupiter square for the month of november pretty much i mean it's from the 4th of november until the 30th you have the ability to be a communicative healer in a way so go gemini your talking is going to assist people you're going to be able to help people if you're doing that professionally already, if you are a communicative healer and you're a Gemini, you're going to have a fabulous month this month in terms of your work. Have lots of clients, have lots of people coming your way who want to hear what you've got to say. Really good. Now, the 5th and the 6th are days of major temptation when um, a romantic figure can appear. A man, a woman, whoever you're into. Um, and again, Venus is in retrograde, but you meet someone at some sort of event on the 5th or 6th who just seems perfect. And don't trust that. You know, I'm not saying don't date and don't fall in love. We have no control over that, okay? But if you meet someone now during this shadow period, I would really suggest that you don't make any major commitments or you don't get married suddenly until the 16th of November and you continue the relationship after the shadow period for at least a month. So wait until the 16th of December and then look at the relationship again and see what it's like. Because then you'll have an idea of the reality of the relationship, rather this picture that's been painted for you. On the 7th of November, we have the new moon in Scorpio and that is really good for you. It pulls loads of Scorpio energy in. Your transiting midheaven and Jupiter are also sitting in your sixth house of daily routine, work and your physical body. So your physical health, Gemini, heal thyself. 
you are able to tune into your own body and see what's going on if you have some chronic inflammation or something that just won't shift you know like you've been exercising but there's just one part of your body that's not cooperating communicate with your body and you will start to get the answer why I, I, what I think Louise Hay or Doreen Virtue did this once and I just I just scoffed I went how pathetic but they said um, listen to your body say leg what's up you don't, you don't have to be you know you don't have to say it like that but you can tune in and say okay my hat my fingers are really hurting fingers what if what is it you want to share with me other than pain Oh, I should be more hands off. Okay. It's that simple. It can be that simple. The body um, gives us messages which are very clear. Also, you see what your daily routine is like and you really understand what your feelings are about your work. But Venus is in retrograde, so it can be a faulty understanding. So a job you've loved for 30 years, now suddenly during this Venus retrograde, you despise it. Don't quit the job. Wait until the 16th of November. So I'm saying to you, Gemini, until the 16th of November, please don't make any major working life decisions. Eighth and ninth is good for work. Continues to be good for work. Uh, the 9th, 10th, and 11th of November... Now, all about forging working relationships with other people to get things moving and to move things ahead. So, if you have the option of working alone or working with other people, choose working with other people. It will work out better for you. Okay. Uh, the 12th, 13th. Ooh. You've got a kite on the 13th. It connects your Mars in... You know, not know your Mars, your Moon in Capricorn, with Chiron in Pisces and your Midheaven in Jupiter, and then with your North Node in Leo. So anyone, Gemini, any one of you guys who want to become famous through your work, today is the day to apply for that job, the breakthrough job. So if you're going to an audition, or if you're submitting a screenplay, or if you're um, trying out a screenshot, or this is um, anyone who wants to break through. So maybe if your website has got a lot of hits but you want more, this is the day to advertise. This is the day to maybe make a YouTube channel and tell the world who you are. It's a really good day for you to fly and expand and grow. 15th, 14th and 15th, you'll have the desire to travel, to learn, to connect uh, to other cultures, to speak to people, to just kind of relax a little bit and broaden your horizons and learn about how different things are done and to just take care of yourself really. Uh, we have the 16th of November now, so Venus goes direct, hallelujah, and it's still in your fifth house. So from the 16th of November now until the 30th of November, it's all systems go when it comes to love and romance. You can, you can go for that again and you can bring that into your life. Also on this day, a lot happens on this day. We have Mercury going retrograde from the 16th of November until the 6th of December. <laughs> Mercury is the planet of communication. It retrogrades three or four times a year. So it happens all the time. So we can't stop living our lives because of mercury retrograde it just makes communication and transportation more difficult it's in your seventh so the way it's going to affect you is communication with other people there may be misunderstandings that arise also on the 16th we have mars going into pisces in your 10th house next to your moon neptune and chiron also in pisces in your 10th house so there's always been a dream of what you wanted to do for work and this Mercury retrograde affects you very directly because it's your ruler and it resurrects some of your hopes and dreams that you've given up on. God, stop. I bought this really crappy laptop um, just, for, just because this astrology system that I love 
is only on Windows, but the laptop clicker is so annoying. So, um, yeah, when Mars goes into Pisces in that tenth, you really have the ability to understand spiritually what your dream job is, what you always wanted to do, what you continue to want, and Mars stays there for ages. Now, by the 15th of December, we've got Chiron, the Moon, Mars, the Rising, Neptune. They're all sitting in your 10th house. And then we've got the transiting Midheaven and the Sun in Sagittarius and Jupiter and Mercury in Sagittarius in your 7th house. So it's all about how do I gallop forward and realize my dreams when it comes to work. And you want to do something that helps other people. So this is a big life-changing month for you, potentially, Gemini. The 16th of December, first of all, Venus, the planet of love and beauty, goes direct. So hallelujah. In your working life now, things start to make more sense again. And you'll start looking at it the way you usually would have in the past. Rather than you have been looking at it during this retrograde. And also the way you've looked at yourself, your own body, um, and your daily routine. They're less negative you feel them as less negative now the problem that happens today it's like the universe doesn't give us a break because on the 16th when venus goes direct mercury the communication planet goes retrograde until the 6th of december and that happens in your seventh house of relationships in sag so again there's room for miscommunication that's the big thing that you have to watch out for this month miscommunication coming across badly making sure that you're not misunderstood, writing things out, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, make sure everything is very, very clear for you, Gemini, because people are likely to just not get what you're on about. Mars moves into Pisces in your 10th house. So spiritually, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, you've got the moon in Taurus in your 12th house by connecting, by grounding yourself and by connecting with a higher power through yoga or meditation or whatever it is, you will find that inner fire. You'll pick up that dream that has died. You'll say, I do want to do this independently and help people. So especially those of you who have had that dream, you're going to be triggered this month to pick that up again. But the universe wouldn't be tr triggering you to pick it up again if it was meant to fail. It won't fail, okay? Otherwise, it wouldn't urge you to restart. On the 21st, 22nd, the moon is in Gemini in your house, your first house of self, and it opposes Mercury. So this is not a good time to kind of um, uh, to to just speak your truth, you know, and be totally like say everything that's on your mind. Don't hold back a little bit. On the twenty fifth and the twenty sixth, the um, moon goes into Cancer in your second. So. You find ways of um, making money through nurturing creativity. But I forgot to mention that on the 23rd of November, we have a full moon in Gemini. So the full moon is in your sign of Gemini. It's at four degrees. So it means it gives you a really false sense of safety and complacency. And that's why I was saying that on the 23rd and the 24th and the 25th, don't Think that you're it and that whatever you say is golden and it's all going to go down very well. Um, do be careful what you say. Think before you speak because it's a month where you can potentially really put your foot in it and say the wrong thing. So that applies on the 24th and the 25th. Then, like I said, the 26th and the 27th are about making, looking at your financial situation and being nurturing that a little bit. Um... On the 27th, you have a grand trine in water and fire. Well, 
in water. It connects your North Node in Cancer with your Chiron in Pisces and Mercury in retrograde and Venus in Jupiter. So this is a day where you have a respite from Mercury making problems for you when it comes to communicating with others. So if you really have an important message that you need to get across to someone, an important emotional message, the 27th is the day to do it and they will understand what you're saying. 28th, 29th and 30th, I think you'll be a bit of a homebody. You'll want to stay home, nurture yourself, take care of yourself, learn what other people are saying and listen um, and really just end the month on a quiet note because it's been quite stressful for you. So it's a month where you have to pay attention, Gemini, because your ruler is, is messing you around a bit. So I hope you have a great month. If you would like a personal reading with me, please go to the website, click on the readings tab and order the reading. In my personal readings, I use astrology, tarot and numerology. The astrology chart is a blueprint of your soul. It shows me where you've been in past lifetimes, what your life purpose is in this lifetime, what your vocational aptitudes are, what's destined for you in love and money and health and relationships, and also what's coming up in future. So if you are interested in looking at that, order the reading on my website. Please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll speak to you next month.